So one Tesla feature that I think does not get a lot of attention and is arguably one of the more important is sentry mode and dash cam. And at the bare minimum, this system will give you peace of mind when your car is parked unattended and in more extreme cases can assist law enforcement with accident investigations. So with that said, I think it's really important that you have a solid understanding of how to set up and optimize this system and use it while you're driving. And I wanna give you a high level overview of what this system can do for you as a Tesla owner and provide you with a solid foundation of knowledge that using it becomes second nature. So this is going to be very dense with details. So if you're looking for specific information, please check the chapters down below in the description so you can skip to the section that will be most useful for you. And my plan is to first give you an explanation of features for both sentry mode and dash cam, show you how to use and set up both systems, and then show you the process for accessing and sharing that video that the car captures. So again, I'm gonna be as thorough as possible because this information uh, I feel is very important to understand and check out the timestamps below to skip around if you need to. It's first important to distinguish between sentry mode and dash cam and both systems are nested within the safety menu in your car and they both utilize the forward, rear, left and right repeater cameras to record all sides of the vehicle. And sentry mode is for whenever the car is parked and it will engage anytime the car's cameras detect movement near it. And it's important to realize that this system will consume your car's battery and it will turn off when your battery gets too low, which is usually less than about 20%. And in terms of sensitivity, I found that movement needs to be within about two feet of the car for sentry mode to engage and log a recording. And anytime that the car does log an event, it will give you a notification at the point in time when you get back into the car. Another cool sentry mode feature that was recently added is you can view a live camera feed via the Tesla app. Because the car has a wireless data connection, you can view a live feed from anywhere in the world. So as long as both your phone and car are connected to cellular networks, you are able to log into the app and view the camera feeds. Now that about covers the basics of sentry mode. So jumping into dash cam, it utilizes all the same cameras to record a continuous 60 minute loop while you're driving. And there's less to talk about here with dash cam because it's fairly straightforward, but no less important than sentry mode. And in a minute, I will get into how to save recordings while driving, which can be incredibly important. Before we get into how to use each system though, I do wanna call your attention to the various settings in the safety menu so you can optimize both systems for your given situation. So under safety, if we scroll down, you can see sentry mode is listed first. We wanna make sure that the slider is in the on position and then to the right, you can see it gives us various exclusions that we may want to select. These selections will vary person to person, but I have home excluded because I park in my own garage, so it would be pretty pointless to have the car recording and wasting energy while there. If you park in a lot or public garage, for those of you who live in apartments or other communal type settings, you may want to leave this on for added peace of mind. Home, work, and favorites are all locations you can set in your car's navigation system. And if you want the ability to also view a live camera feed from the Tesla app, you also need to make sure that slider is engaged. Just below sentry mode, you can see our dash cam settings that I have mine set to auto, which means it will always record anytime I'm driving. I also have the on honk feature engaged, so if I beat my horn, the car will automatically record a short clip of video surrounding my use of the horn. We also have the option in this menu to delete dash cam clips as well as format the USB drive. Now back in the main controls menu, you can see both dash cam and sentry mode in the bottom right. And this is the default page that comes up when you press the car button on the left side of your display screen. And visually you can see a red circle on the dash cam button. And this is your indication that the system is actively recording. And when sentry mode is on, the sentry symbol will be red indicating active monitoring. You can also check in the Tesla app under the security menu to slide sentry mode on or off. And this is the same area that you can also access the live camera view. And within the live camera feature, you can honk the horn, flash the lights, and also talk through the car's external speaker. Though I'm not sure how useful yelling at someone who's too close to your car will prove to be. 
But moving right along, it's important that you have both sentry mode and dash cam settings optimized for your living and driving situation. And I encourage you to really look through these menus and make sure that the appropriate settings are turned on so you're utilizing both of these systems. Using sentry mode is very straightforward and if you have it turned on as soon as you walk away from your car and it locks, sentry mode will begin monitoring for movement. And if you return to your car and an event was recorded, you'll see a notification in the bottom left of the screen and you can view the event by touching the notification. This will launch the sentry mode dash cam viewer which will allow you to scrub through the sentry footage. And on the footage timeline, a red dot will be visible and this indicates the point where the system was triggered. Now, because the system is constantly monitoring, sentry mode will save footage both before and after the event. So you have a solid chunk of video that nicely captures what happened. And within dash cam viewer, you can also delete the clip. And in most cases, sentry mode will capture people walking near your car or other vehicles moving out of parking spaces. In the case though that someone or something does damage to your car, you may need to remove the footage from your USB drive and I'll show you that process in just a moment after we talk about how to use dash cam. As long as you have dash cam set to automatic, the car will constantly be recording the 60 minute loop of footage. Just be aware that it is constantly overriding the old footage. So if something happened more than 60 minutes of drive time ago, the footage is gone. So this next step is very important if you wanna save a clip while you are actively driving. And if something does happen on the road and you want to guarantee that footage is saved, you must press the car icon and then press the dash cam button. And you'll see the icon change to a green save symbol and then the word saved will flash once the process is complete. And this will save a small clip with footage before and after the point when you press the button. So let me just reiterate that if you wanna absolutely make sure that your footage is saved, be sure to press the button anytime you encounter an event on the road that needs to be saved for later. As an alternate, if you have the on honk setting activated, you can also just wail on your horn and the dash cam will automatically save the clip as well. To view dash cam footage though, you need to navigate to the dash cam viewer, which is in the app menu and make sure you have the dash cam selected up top and then you can view your recorded footage with the same red indicator on the timeline showing you the point where you hit the red button. Last but certainly not least is removing footage from your car. And this is a feature that Tesla hopefully will update in the future to make it just a little bit more user friendly. And right now you'll need to remove your USB drive from the car and plug it into a computer in order to view the files on it and copy them to your phone or other device should you need to send them to insurance or law enforcement. One thing to note as well is that all current Tesla models now have the USB port and included USB drive in the glove box. My Model 3 is a 2020 though, so it did not come with this setup and I purchased a 512 gigabyte solid state drive and a SATA to USB adapter to connect it to the car in the center console. And the included USB drive from Tesla is 128 gigabytes. And this process is easy to do, but a bit more cumbersome than simply transferring files directly from the car to your phone. I'll include links to the products I use below. And if you want to upgrade over the storage that Tesla provides, a solid state drive might be a good option. It's important to consider that sentry mode and dash cam are going to be constantly writing and overwriting to this drive. So if you are looking at USB thumb drives, they should be a high endurance model. So hopefully you can see the extreme utility that both sentry mode and dash cam have. And if you haven't been using it currently, please do so because you never know when having footage could be incredibly important. And if you have any questions about anything I discussed in today's video, let me know in the comments down below. And if you made it this far and wanna learn more about your Tesla, check out my video on one pedal driving, which will be linked right here. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.